indirectly what we have seen from this figure and this figure, if you keep in mind, is that, is that it's essentially the a conditioning. So people send relatively large orders when they expect this large order not to push the price too much. So it might not be the most exciting effect, but still it's interesting. It's okay, we can... Uh, this is okay, no, I don't have to write that. I mean, these are clear. And, uh, and, uh, and there, was the, uh, there was a third point still talking about impact of single trades is that if you look not at just the leg one effect, but look on longer terms, to look at the entire uh, structure of the response of the system, so how much the price changes, uh, you have these type of curves, so you seem to have some structure as a function of the time scale, you seem to have some structure on short scales, it's increasing, and then it's flat. So the fact that it's flat later is, is what one would expect, that, that correlations uh, in price you don't have long range correlations. On short scales, the fact you had that you have some structure, well, we will discuss it a bit later looking at models, what, 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 what they say about this but we have the guess that it's related to the fact that the order flow itself is autocorrelated, okay? And, and I think what was more interesting, or it's a question of taste, is the question of uh, these meta orders. So meta orders are clear, right? So it's a one big decision that is traded in, uh, on a long time period in single trades, so just for the language. And as we have seen that, uh, okay, so it's, it's uh, it's here, and actually uh, this, this uh, I will write up again. So what you see is that that the that the impact, which so the change in the price, let's say, uh, it's, it's in the change the change in the price due to a trade of size a meta order of size Q goes something like this. So the main important thing is that so okay this is if you execute an, a quantity Q on a time scale T then your impact will be, well, this is the important dependence. So let's, now I put 0 0.5 here, but okay, that's an approximation, sort of 0 0.5, so, and, uh, and okay, so this is the important part, and for things to work, you have to put a scale in the system, and there is actually some order one thing here. I, I put it here, but that's not very important for us, okay? So this is what discussed, so the, your quantity divided by the quantity traded in the same time window, but well, then we got, we understood that T might not matter that much to some power, to some nonlinear power, okay? So no, not power one. And, uh, and okay, so this is just, as we discussed, this is the volatility. So it's just to have a scale which is of, of prices. Uh, but the important thing is here, okay, this is what we see on this curve. So just, just to prove it, and we saw that actually it's for very different markets it, it holds. And okay, so this, this, this starts to be, I think, interesting because it seems that, well, the, it, it's all the things that we said yesterday. So the, the fact that you have a nonlinear response is unusual. It means that something strange is going on in the system. Obviously, you see that there is some memory. So, okay, so, so what does this mean? So if you trade at quantity Q and you look at how much the price moves, it will have some behavior like this. Okay, this is a square root, just if I can draw well, it's something like that. What does it mean? Well, you have some, in principle, there is a diverging susceptibility here. Of course, in practice, you have discretization, whatever, but so for very small volumes, you can push the price by a lot. So in some way to say this, that for, for very small volumes, this has an anomalously large impact, and of course, there is a sort of flattening out here. So the more you trade it, the less you're pushing the price which means that there is a memory in the system. The first half of your trade pushes much more than the second. And in many ways to say it, I mean, I expect <laughs> that I'm, this is, these are understood. So this is, this is more a language that you know. And, um, and we discussed, okay, just to make it clear, we discussed a bit also the, okay, this is nice, it's square root, but what are the real orders of magnitude? So uh, we discussed a bit at the very end, the idea of, <coughs> For, for, some, for some typical numbers, what is the, how big do you, does this Q have to be for this thing to be, to be comparable to, to fixed costs like the half spread in the book, in the limit order book, right? 
And okay, I want just want to, I, I made a quick uh, calculation and I just looked at Apple, how much you have to trade uh, on a given day, the day before, and we came up with a number, I think like 50,000. So if Q is $50,000, then this already dominates over fixed costs. And just to keep in mind, okay, $50,000 can seem a large number or can seem a small number. It's still something that we can at least write down. It's not something enormous, but it was for the stock of Apple, which is the, probably the most liquid. So actually, if you look for an average liquid stock in the US market, it will be more on the order of a few thousand euros that you have to trade in Q for this to have to be not at all negligible. So it's, it's okay, it's good, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, I, I just, we looked at it yesterday, but so, so in a crude approximation, what you would say here is that Okay, so sigma t is, uh, is something like square root of t, right? The, the, the more, the longer it is for, no, for not very short times. This is okay, and actually what you would, so what is vt? vt is, is, is the volume that is traded in a market while you are acting. That is, again, for not very short scales, you expect it to be linear. So in two hours, the volume traded by the entire market will be double of what is traded in one hour. So what we say is that if this holds, and if this is 0, 0,5, then, then the T dependence is not there at all in an ideal case. This might not hold perfectly, and this might not be exactly 0, 0,5, but even if you have a T dependence, it will be something extremely weak. It, it becomes hard to measure. So if you have a T dependence here of power 0, 0,1, it's, you cannot do much. Okay. And so one more thing that we, I mentioned yesterday, but uh, I wanted to just put up a figure about this. Is, uh, is what happens, okay, we discussed what the price does while you're trading and what's the, the, the final impact. And we said that it's the same since the market doesn't know when you're going to stop to the same functional form. But what is also important, okay, at a given point you traded all your quantity and you stop and you just wait how the system relaxes, yeah? You kick the system, what happens? And it relaxes or not, okay, it does relax. So what we see here, is actually what you would have, so how, how, how the price moves later. The problem is I put Q here, so he, if we said that, okay, instead of Q, we are talking about the time that we are executing, then, then this would be a correct picture to do like that. I'm being vague here. So one thing is that, yes, there is a, there is a clear uh, relaxation in the market, yeah? But there is a permanent check. I mean, there is a? How do you know? Because, I mean, ah, because I drew it like this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not known. It's it's not very so. So this is, in practice, this is what you see. Okay. But it is obvious that it will go to zero or not. I mean, you might have some permanent impact. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not obvious. It's okay. in practice, it's very hard to measure because so this is on days like 50 days. So what does it mean? On one given day, you're trading, okay. and then for 50 days, so you can add up what's the volatility of the process without anything. So you really have a lot of, need to have a lot of data. Of course, the further problem is that probably you are, it's not that you trade once and then you wait 50 days. You will be doing something else in the future. So it's, in practice, it's very hard to measure. It's hard to get good data for this. What is clear is that there is a decay. It seems to be a power lowish behavior in the beginning. Actually, it, it, it starts to decay fast here. And then it's not very clear. So it, this figure would say, and this paper, which I took the figure from, actually it's not here, it's here but it's, it's a paper from this January, uh, claims that this goes to, that this flattens out. That this, I mean, that's what, it, visually it seems like if after 50 days, this seems to be flattening out. It's not at all clear. It's, um, it depends a lot on how you condition your data. So uh, it's, it's a very much ongoing question, ongoing research. But what is important is that in all these questions, of course, there is a question of, of, of can, can you extract energy from the system in con continuously? Can, can I buy something and resell the same thing and just buy my actions, uh, push the price in the direction that I gained on all these? And so there are some theories how it should behave. Actually, what, what it says, so, so if this goes like the square root increasing, the decrease should be, also power lowish, so it should go to zero. 
I'm not sure if you can have it. I don't think you, if you have a permanent part, you have some manipulation. I think I, it's, it's, a, it's a <coughs> an important question to study. So you cannot have trivial manipulations of the price, of course, or that's what you expect, okay? Is this okay? I hope. Uh, okay, so, so that's what we had yesterday, and... Uh, and uh, and what we will do now is try to come up with, with some some okay this is what we see in the market we have what have we seen I think the main things in the past little lecture is that well there is a long range correlation of the order flow and prices and uh, trades push the price so how can we put this together in some at least phenomenological type of models we will see more complicated as well uh, probably on Monday so so and what we will do is is we will try. Today we will try to, 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 to look at models at the micro scale. So, so there are models which are more on the, on, the, on, the, on the long scale. What we'll try to do now is how can each trade affect the price, so each one of them, and of course what, what, what would this add up to in, in, in total, okay? So we'll look at uh, a couple of models. So well, one is sort of simple, but it's, it's good to see it once. So if we are naive, if you have a naive model and we say that uh, that every trade that every trade pushes the price by the same quantity, okay? So it's a why not? So, so, so every trade impacts. I call it G one by G one, okay? So every trade that happens uh, does this. I don't know if everyone signed this paper. There is a paper going around. Uh, so then, 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 of course, what does it mean that, that the price response, so the, the return, sorry, the, the return will be, if I define it like this, so just, just for the indices, I think every lecture I define slightly different indices. This is how I define it now. <laughs> I was just coming down the stairs. If I now redefine it, I will mess up something. So, it's, uh, so, so then it, everything, it will be something like this, right? Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, so okay, what am I writing? I'm simplifying life here. But uh, so this is some noise term. So I say that this is zero and it has some variance. The Gaussian noise, uh, epsilon will be the sign as we had it yesterday, and so I'm already simplifying things. I only care about the sign. We saw that dependence in volume is is, is weak, and I just forget it for now because life is much simpler. Okay. I'm I'm talking about one product here. Yeah. For, so so I, that's why there is no other index. I, I'm considering that. So actually, one thing that we also mentioned yesterday, that there is a type of cross impact. It was just uh, anecdotally, there is an evidence. It's, it's super interesting and a lot of work going on. We will forget it. So yeah, there is one product and only things that happen on this product can impact it. Of course, what's in this noise could be an effect of everything else. So, 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 okay, so in a model like this, you can, we can write up, so the, the, the of course, what it, this means that the, 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 if you just want to talk about the price itself, then well, you can always write in this uh, not too profound way. Okay, so I didn't do anything. Yeah. Sorry, the noise of different times are related or not? The, the what? The, the Gaussian noise. The noise is uh, is uncorrelated. It's 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 some idiosyncratic thing that doesn't. Uh, it's not. So we are in an ideal world. And so I didn't do anything. I just said, okay, the price at time t will be some reference price from the beginning of the history times all the effects. Okay, it's clear. And okay, one can play in a model like this. It won't be surprising what what we get from it is that. Uh, is that, okay, you can have two situations here. Okay, G1 is, is constant, so if there is no correlation in epsilon, in epsilon in time is, is, uh, is independent, which is okay, th then things are okay. So if no correl in epsilon, 
then, uh, then, then the price response will be, uh, so which, which we defined yesterday like this. This expectation will be equal to G. I, I don't, don't write out, okay? Uh, everyone can test it, so what happens if you write it to, out? There are no correlation terms. It will be only G1 that remains out of this, okay? Uh, This here, yes. the, in the, the indices, you mean? Or I, I just say the return is price change from T to T, plan, T plus one. The mid price change. Yes, I'm talking about mid prices here. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I, 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 most of the time I will talk about mid prices because, so what do you think? So there, there, there is a mid price and there are the two ask and bid prices. Uh, you hope that the mid is somehow more informative. It's a more average thing. So the, the bid and ask is, so already if you have a buy, it will happen here. If you have a sell here. Uh, so already there is a bounce in between the two, which you don't think contains real information for us on, on any time scale longer than this. So I'm talking about mid prices. You're right. So okay, this is the this is the price response, and actually one can write up. I'll write it here so that I have space. But you can also write up the the what we call this variogram for this uh, mid price. This thing here is visible which is, uh, okay, which will look something, okay, it will be actually this, but what's important that it will be linear in L. Things are okay, things are diffusive. Okay, so, so if there is no correlation, sure, we can have a model like this, and no, no surprise here. I could have just omitted writing it. Um, but the problem is that, that, uh, that there are correlations in the price. We have seen it uh, the other time. And, and okay, if you have correlations, so if you have correlations like we, this, we saw yesterday, then things do not work anymore, of course, here. And you would have uh, actually a correlation in between returns as well, which are of the same structure. Uh, essentially, it would be like this. Okay. Um, so uh, it's not surprising. I could have also said uh, we don't even write this up, but since we all do models, uh, you can see that this is called G1. So it, it, it is a hint that we'll try to do something a bit more complicated, but in the same manner. That's why I wrote it up. <coughs> so, but it means that if there is an order, order flow correlation, <laughs> that implies correlation in the returns, which is at odds with what we have seen before. So, okay, this won't, <coughs> won't work like that. Okay. And so, <clears throat> so the goal is, and actually I think what we will sort of look at today, probably won't go further if you have also the exam later, is, is okay, let's, let's make this, let's stay in this type of world, so we might want to have a linear world, but, but more complicated, there is a, what we actually call propagator models. Uh, well, it's clear, okay, it's clear that what we did here, okay, we, we came up with something, it doesn't work, good. Uh, so propagator models in which the idea is that, okay, impact is not just a, a direct uh, kick and then, then nothing happened, but somehow the, the, the effect of a trade propagates in time. So, so, so which would be not very different in a first approximation of the previous equation. So you say that price can be written up somehow like this. Uh, what the and so so what would be the limit so, um, okay so what am I doing here it's it's a linear model, so this is just a sum. What I say is that every trade that happened has an effect that propagates through time, which is this G 
tau. So what I do, I sum up, to get the price at t, well, I take some reference price far away, and I sum up all the trades that happened until now, and, and I say that the, the, the way they impact the price is, well, their sign times how, sometimes they're a propagator, I mean, I'm sort of, I think it's clear. So, so how, how much did the effect of them fade away until now, right? So the trade at, uh, at n will propagate to t via this propagator, g, g t minus n, and okay, there is a noise term. Is, is it clear what we are trying to write? Um, so, so okay, it's, it's, uh, it's a relatively okay model. It's, it's, it's not overly complicated. We can see, okay, what, what predictions it gives on, on different timescales. Actually, just for, for language, so this we call progated per model, there are people who call this uh, transient impact model for obvious reasons. Okay, and, uh, and, and okay, so, so we, we made a huge amount of assumptions here. Well, okay, we, we said something about G, but we can always try to fit a linear model, but we also made assumptions that, that, that uh, volume of trade doesn't matter, the volume of the single trade, right? We only have epsilon here. Which is okay, which, which we saw that it's, we might do this. We also say that uh, time of trade doesn't matter. Okay, actually. And, and we also say that, okay, market conditions, which is a bit similar to the second point. Right? I mean, it, it's clear there is no, in this G, depends only on T minus N, but doesn't depend on, uh, on N in this language, and there is no nothing extra. So it's, it's obvious that we did, we, we did these assumptions, and I think it doesn't, do not surprise you, but, but keep in mind that this is a huge simplification of the world. The world is more complicated than this. I mean, you know that thing, that it matters exactly from the conditioning of trades. You, saw, you see that trades are conditioned quite a lot on what happens, this contradicts it, but what we hope is that on average things will, will work out. And is this okay? Sorry? All these assumptions are contradicted by Well, the first one we saw and we see that, okay, volume of trade is it's not completely flat, but there was a very uh, very weak exponent in the, in the impact depending on this. So we can say, yeah, sure, it's not exact, but we can live with it. Uh, okay, but market conditions, we do not how, know how to define them well, how many variables there are, so we will have to think. Time of trade, if it matters, we believe that it should matter, but okay, we, I mean, it's, it's, uh, we, we try to live without and see how much this predicts. And then we compare the predictions of this model with the real world and we'll think, okay, so what, what should we... It's, it's, the time of the, the moment of the trade, so was it at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m.? Okay. What, 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 I mean, which is a bit the same as market conditions, what, what was going on? So there is no N dependence here. It's, it's, it's the usual way of, I mean, actually I was here in Deepak's talk in the beginning yesterday, that's what he said. No, that, okay, let's try to throw away information, I mean, uh, some conditioning and, and see how, yeah? We will see at the end. So, so what would transient impact mean? What, what is the, how, how would one read this type of model if you have a propagator on each, what, what does it mean? Each trait has a, an impact that propagates in time, which is G. Well, if G is transient, and it's a hint what it will be. The, the form, yeah, exactly. So it, it's not, indeed, just this model doesn't mean that it has to be transient. Though what we saw here, you guess that it should be transient because otherwise you can rewrite it in a language like this and you would get, uh, but, but this we'll try to see explicitly, okay? And, um, and so I clean everything here. And so what, okay, so, so, so what's the plan now is that of course you want to understand how G looks like, how G behaves 
empirically and try to and, and, and analytically if you can try and try to understand what what predictions it gives for all the things that we have seen uh, yesterday and then then see okay actually I write up a, another form of this as well should I do it now actually me okay I write up another form of this just because it, maybe it's easier to, to to understand but maybe you understood everything is that you can do you can write up a differential form of this usually and, and often I, I will get back to this so, uh, so actually what you can do is also do this So where we defined so what I'm doing is, is a simple stuff I'm taking the differential form of this instead of prices I take differences of prices and one can write up in this language you will have another propagator which will be the differential of this we, we will get back to this because actually some for some numerical reasons it's better writing like this but for now, we'll take this. But maybe this is easier to, to understand. So what does it mean that the return at time t will depend on some, uh, some direct uh, immediate impact of, of, of the trade that happens at t, or I mean just before t, plus the memory of all. Uh, so, so this is the memory of everything in the market. And this is the immediate. It, it, it might help. Uh, in, in understanding, but it's, it's, it's not much deeper. Uh, so, okay, so return at time t depends on all the trades in the past. Well, it's, it's also seen from there. And so the question is how to, so, so how to calibrate. So you have this type of equation. What can you do in these cases? So if you have real data, of course, what can you do? Well, this is a linear model. You can do some linear regression if you want. <coughs> but usually just I want to show how, how one solves a system like this. Is, um, so the problem is that if you want to do it uh, in an explicit way, so no, not just via some regression, but solve it by hand, well, this G you cannot measure. So you want to collect, connect it to some measurable, some expectations, right? So actually the way to, so calibration or solving the, the problem which again is a thing that, I mean, this, this is not really finance related here. So the way you usually do is you can write up, so you have this equation here, and you can, in the same manner, write up for another time. Thing. I just changed the, the, the index, okay? And so what you want to do, right? Oh, it, it's clear how the, what, what the summing uh, what is, right? It's for, for, for the limits for it. I'm, I'm, uh, and uh, which means that, okay, well, what the, the measurable thing usually is this that you like to look at, which will be the following shape. Today we have a bit of this. Uh, unfortunately, even if once these things have to be written up, so okay, what you can do is take this and subtract this, and so what's the message? Okay, it's easy. We can do it. What's the message of this? That well, you have all the trades that will that happened between uh, before t, so before the first price for all these you have the differential of two propagators so you will have the propagator 
Uh, is it clear? So how much trade before T affected T and how much it affected T plus L? It will be the difference of these two times the trade. And all the trades that happened after uh, T, but of course, before T plus, T plus L, we'll just have their propagator, nothing to some trade. Okay, this, 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 this is trivial up to now. What is, what is usually the trick to, to have to solve this type of problems is that you want to get, you, you want to see expectations. You're right, it is, the, this time series you cannot really calculate with. So actually what you usually do is the following. So I write it up and then we'll discuss. So you say, okay, the response to the price, which is exactly this. The response to the trade, right? So from this, what you want to do is to get to a correlation. In practice, you're multiplying by epsilon t and taking, taking the time average. So this thing, how will it look like? It will look in the following way. So if we just use what's, what's here. Where is it? Beginning is obvious. These are ugly, these equations. I mean, wrong to write. <laughs> So what we say, yeah, we are neglecting, yeah, there would be a noise term. We, we, we forget about noise for now, yeah. I mean, part, no, sorry. So part of the noise, of course, cancels out since we're looking at difference, but, but the remaining, uh, yeah. For simplicity, I threw it away, but it's, uh, you can always have, uh, have a noise term. Right, so is it clear what I did here? So I'm just uh, multiplying by the size. So I mean, taking uh, correlations that we've seen correlation between price change and the sign. And so what we see here is exactly the correlation, right? This, this is, uh, so in practice, this is uh, C T minus N, right? And, um, and okay, so what one can do, Is, um, is the following. I'll write it out properly, but then uh, uh, it will be the following thing. Uh, okay, I actually I do not even write it out properly. What did we do here from there? Well, instead of, uh, of epsilon, epsilon, we put the correlation, okay? And we paid a bit with, with uh, replacing uh, variables. So what we do is, once we do, here we will do n, we will call, uh, so what is t minus n, we will uh, replace by n. We will do a step, and actually there, in the second term, there is another replacement of variables, just to simplify life, it doesn't change. There will be another, and after we do, just for you, if you want to check it, I think we are doing this. So, so once do this replacement, write it up, and then in the second term, do another replacement, whatever. So we get this here. Is it okay? I don't have to write it out, right? I mean, you can play with it. And, um, and so this is what you want to solve. Okay, so, so, so. No, actually, we are happy because 
So we have these Gs here, but everything else is measurable. C we can measure, R we can measure. So we have a system of equations that we can, that we can, that we can solve, uh, or a matrix, matrix equation if, that we can solve. So, so we related this G to, to measurables. Uh, and of course, we get back the, re, the, the result that we had before. If no autocorrelation, then, uh, then what you would get is R being G, which comes that only one of these terms will stay where C has zero in its um, argument, which of course the autocorrelation at leg zero is one, and, and, and you get back this. So, so but no, no surprise, okay? Uh, what, is, um, what is the problem is that, of course, this is nice to write it up like that. We are always summing since, since ever in the past. But first of all, our time series is finite. So we'll have problems if we, if we have too long legs. And we have seen that the correlation decays. Under, we know that the correlation will decay under the noise level after some time. So in practice, to solve this, actually, it's, it's a bit more complicated for the following reason, is that in practice, there is a, let's call it L max, which is the maximum leg that we, can, that we care about, because otherwise we are, we are talking only about noise. And um, which, which okay, can be related to the size of the system. And so to solve it with a maximum leg, it means that you have some boundary condition in this, in this system of equations. You say that after this, nothing matters anymore, right? It's, it's okay what I'm saying? The problem, huh? Sha? Sharp relation. I don't know what is the sharp condition. So, which means that probably it is. So, okay, I, I say it, and then you say if it's related. So, what, what's your problem here? What's the co boundary condition in this system if you say that after some L max everything decays? It would be that, that this G itself if you want to solve this, you would have, you would have a condition that, that G uh, L goes to zero as L goes to infinity, let's say. So it's, it's the, the, the propagator itself. So that you measure up to the time and then everything is zero, which is a, in, numerically it's, it's a very dangerous thing. So that's why actually I wrote up the derivative form. So you're much happier to write things in derivative form and have a boundary condition on the slope of this, saying that it will flatten out. Is it clear what I'm saying? And so in practice, I just write it up so that, uh, so that well, it, it can happen that you solve this stuff like this. Not, it's, it's not a very much finance-related type of problem. So it's, it's good to know how to solve this. So actually, you can, you can as we said, you can define a, a, the, 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 the derivative. I will write it up properly, and then I'll say what I'm saying. So I define a new variable, which will be this. Should be some, simply the derivative of, of the response. I mean the, the, we are in finite. We are in the discrete time, so derivative. And uh, and then you can write up an equation for this, which is simpler. I think it. Uh, I think it's like this. So you can get up, get to an equation of this type, where k, as we defined before, will be the, the, the how do you call it, discrete derivative? I mean, it's the, the, the differences of g, and s is the differences of, of the response. So solving the system and then integrating, you can, you can get g, OK? And what you're happy about is that here, your boundary condition will be that this k goes to 0 for large legs, which is uh, less dangerous. So it's uh, in practice. Um, so that's, well, that's the way to solve a problem like this. Now what we want to do is look at how does this G look like if it is solved. But actually, I want to give a, 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 a homework here. 
because that's the way to do. So, which is, I think it's useful to put, get your hands on this type of calculations. You might not like it. So, so let's have a simplified version. So what is it? Exercise. Uh, so I assume that, okay, but what did we say here? We, we omitted many things. We had one propagator. Let's assume that you have several type of events in the, in the world. So let's say you have uh, uh, two types of trades, large and small. Okay, we'll call it L and S. Okay? Uh, and we will call the type of event, uh, so, so what we will, we will call this pi. Okay, so you have some type of definition, what you call small trades and large trades, volumes below 100 and above 100, for example. You can, you can define it for yourself. I mean, you don't need to. And so then you can, um, you can of course, write up a similar type of model, just it becomes a bit more complicated. So let's write it up. So I write it up and then I explain properly what I'm talking about. So what are the summing going on? I think it should be like this. So what I'm doing here is uh, I say they are, I have two types, event, large and small. I can, they might have different propagators, and I want to check this. Is it true or not? I mean, it's a relevant problem that one can check. Well, I can always write up my price as summing over all events convoluted with their, by the, with their propagators. We don't say, but obviously it is a convolution. We don't discuss it. And this will be a Kronecker delta here, just the way you choose. You, you have to choose your event every, so we are, this is also that we discussed. We are in even time, in discrete time. In every moment, there is one type of event can, that can happen. So you have to do the choice on this. Okay? Sorry? Yes? Pi t. I mean, pi? Pi t. Pi t. So this is a given before solving the problem. What is given? Yeah, so in every moment, you know, you, you, you have, I mean, in practice, imagine that you have your date, and in any moment, you, you know if it was a, an L or S type of trade. And you just want to, 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 to see, well, what you want, your question is, okay, you can measure things in your data. There are the measurables as we had here. You, have, you can measure responses and correlations, and you want to determine G. How would you do it? Uh, there is a question, uh, so do Okay, so is it sort of clear what I'm... So the question is, I mean, write it up. Obviously, the question will come to a point. Define relevant ways of response functions and correlations. I mean, relevant, in the, I mean, do averages that you can measure on a, on a time series and solve the system. Shaheen is not happy. <laughs> it's a homework. Uh, is the problem okay? Or nobody cares because there is the exam afterwards. Are we supposed to find some general equation like this, or we need to give some data and solve it on something? No, no, no. It's no, no. Solving on it. No, no. A general equation, of course. Yes. So this is the this is the point. So solve solve the system of equations and give a sort of closed form solution or something that you okay. What did I give here? I gave a system that you can, I can tell you, okay, invert the system now to get K, of course. So, so a, a type of solution like this. I mean, the, the hint is that, of course, it won't be extremely diff different, but one has to play a bit. Yes. 
So the goal of the exercise is to, 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 to be familiar with what we wrote up here, to, to be forced to do a calculation like this. Yeah. So what you have a data, you have measurables in it. Okay. In, in this one dimensional case, what are measurables? Well, R is a measurable okay. and C is a measurable. Okay. So we are happy because we have an equation here that relates R and C, okay. which one can solve. Uh, if I give you R, I give you C, you can solve it. Uh, we discussed here a bit question of numerical issues, but okay, let's forget it for now. I mean, we don't mind about it here in this solution. The point is, do something similar in which you can correct measurables okay. from which you can um, okay. find G. Uh, and okay, so I mean, uh, where can you think about it, I guess? So there, I don't know about the tutorials. On Monday, there is at least one tutorial or more, maybe more. I don't know, because we are, we are a bit, I, I threw a bit of exercises here and there, and uh, they are uh, summing up. So, okay, uh, no, 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 let, let, let's, let's, let's also do something. Uh, so, so what is, uh, so, so we, okay, we have a type of model, a linear type of model in which impact propagates. Okay, let's first of all see how these things look like. Uh, and I have to explain, there are too many curves on these graphs, but I will explain you. So these are uh, two examples. Actually, I can tell you it's, it's Intel and Cisco. These are two existing stocks. So. What you have here, so the flat curves are the response functions that we have seen before, okay? Uh, so you have uh, the, the, the price change uh, as, a as a function of time scale. And so these decaying curves, which actually it's a bit ugly, these figures, just I didn't find very good ones. Uh, I, I might show others later. Uh, so these are these Gs, so you can see the Gs here. So that's uh, what we see that indeed they are decaying. They seem to be, well, if you look at this, you give an agent that indeed it's transient. You don't see where it really goes. Uh, but, but it seems to be the case. So it's decaying as expected, which will bring us in the direction that yeah, you, you would expect uh, prices to be diffusive. And, uh, and okay, so what you see here, it's, I think these are extremely ugly plots, sorry for showing these. So what you see here is, is the G in a log log scale. So what you see is that at least in the tail, there is uh, maybe some, some power law -ish dependence, okay? So, so it's, it's exactly the same stuff here, just on a log log scale. Actually, we see that it's an ex it seems to be the same exponent in the two cases, around one quarter. Um, so, it's, so it's okay, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's decaying very slowly uh, with an exponent a little smaller than one. I have to clean up here. And uh, and okay, so 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 this is actually we, we spoke about long range persistence just for the language we spoke about long range persistence of the order flow. Usually, this is called long range resilience of the order book. So, and you you have these two long memory processes uh, playing one against the other. So, the question I think that we want to ask is uh, is okay. So, so here there is an exponent zero twenty five. But how, what is this, can, can we get, get a hint on what this exponent uh, is? And so that's what we'll try to look at in, uh, in the following. So, it's so okay, we have seen that. That, that this is what we expect from price, this is the main, uh, what we call stylized fact, was this, we expect this to be somehow linear in L, right? This is what we call the variogram. And, um, and so what, can do, what one can do is of what one wants to do is write up this thing in the previous model and see how it, how it behaves. And we will be a bit simplifying here, and I will do the, say, the, the following. I say, I care about the asymptotic behavior. I care only about large L. I don't care about, actually you see that here there is some the difference up to let's say one, like 100, it's not really following this power law, it's later. So I'll do the following simplification. So large legs, I will only, care about the following 
uh, I will write the following thing. Uh, to be proper, Okay, so, so I'm contradicting what I did before. What did we say before? That the price difference between T plus L and T will be essentially an integral on G and an integral on the derivative of G. Is it okay what I'm saying? What we said is that the change between T and T plus L will depend on all trades that happened between, before T and these will have two propagators, how much they affect T and how much they affect T plus L and the difference of these, plus the propagator of all trades that happen between the two things. What I say is, okay, let's say L is large and I only care about the first term. Everything that happened before T is, is already forgotten. Okay, so we are in an asymptotic world. Nothing changes. One can write up roughly the same equations that they're much more ugly if you have all the terms because, of course, what you want is to take the square of this and, uh, and that's it. So, so let's light up the following thing. So what will you, so to make sign of the fact that this L is large, I will just go to T minus zero. Uh, it doesn't matter that much, just to have a bit less, uh, less variables in the system. And that can be okay. You can, you can write it up in a simple way. If, I mean, you will check it at home if I don't make an error. Okay, so I'm, 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 I'm no, not doing anything uh, very complicated. What I say is that, okay, I use this fact, I re-index a bit just to have less letters in the system. So it will be, the, the, the change here will be sum up to, up to T uh, of, of this uh, propagator times the sign. And so I have to take the square of it, I will write it up properly like this, okay? And, um, and so for, if one wants, you can, you can say that you can call this thing here, I will call it Q, and this thing here I will call P, for simplicity. I just change variables to have life a bit simpler. And what I will have is the following. change variables and I just know that epsilon epsilon uh, epsilon epsilon average uh, product of the average is the correlation uh, nothing new here and so okay one one could uh, actually if, 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 if you move a bit to continuous time maybe maybe it's easier to, to, to see this but we okay let's let's say that so this somehow I just give the hint of how you can see the asymptotic exponent okay so this, okay, you, you could say that uh, you write it like this. So I didn't do much here. I just moved to continuous time because life is easier there because I want to make uh, a change of variables. I mean, there are, all these, uh, there are a couple of equations, but the, the final solution will be very simple, so don't, don't, don't worry. And uh, okay. And so what can, I, uh, what can I do next? Okay, I mean, I didn't write it explicitly, but what you see is that there's this that the behavior of somehow this uh, G tau is something like this. I will call it minus beta just to have a letter. So we saw that it's some power law exponent there that I'm looking for that I want to that I want to find. Okay. And uh, so we are almost at the end of this. Don't, don't, don't worry. So actually, what you can do is uh, 
is OK. You can rewrite this here in the following way. So use the information that we have. just being a bit vague. What do I do? Uh, this, I, this I knew from yesterday. This I know from today. I want to find beta. So OK, from this thing here, let's write up the dependence of them on, on, on the okay? on P and Q. Is it OK what I'm doing? It's, it's, I don't know if it's too simple or it's too complicated. No one said anything. I hope it's too simple. So, so actually, if you, you do a replace <coughs> here, if you want to do the following, you can say Q will be some uh, T times U, and P will be something like T times V. So I'm just taking, taking U and V between 0 and 1 change of variables. Then what I get is the following. Uh, okay, I write the final thing, it will be the following. So, okay, here, so what will we have? We will have a t to the minus beta here. We will have a t to the minus beta here, and we will have a, a t minus, uh, yeah, we will have a t to the minus gamma probably here from the difference. Uh, yes, and something else which will be okay, which will write up, but which won't depend on t, so we'll be happy about. It. So actually, the following happens: you will write, you will get how how much is this? It's minus two beta, minus gamma. But actually, you're integrating. So of course, here also you have a t dependence, and here also have a t dependent. So you will have a a plus two. I don't have color, so that's because of the integration. And something else. I mean, I write it up, but uh, uh, just to be clear, so you will have something like this, I think, if I didn't make an error, which is unprobable. Anything. Anyway, something here, which is okay. This is a number, okay? <laughs> We don't care about it because we care about the asymptotics. Are we okay here? So this is the behavior in time that we expect. And what do we want for things to be diffusive? Is to go the, to have this to go as t square. So in theory, uh, sorry, to go this linear in t. So so what we have I mean, diffusivity would be uh, ensured if if minus 2 beta minus gamma plus 2 is equal to 1. And hopefully, the solution of this is, uh, is uh, 1 minus gamma over 2 for beta. Uh, check it. I mean, I, it can easily happen that I made an error somewhere here, but I think, I, I hope not. But anyway, so if you want diffusivity, we get a condition of the exponent here depending on the exponent here. So let's stop now and let's think about it if, if, if it's clear what I'm writing. And the equations are, I, I think it's simple to rewrite. They are not very, so we are, we are not exact here. We, 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 we just want in the, for, for large L to, to describe. So is it clear what we are saying? Yeah, the main idea is the following. We have seen yesterday this, right? Right, that there is this long memory in the order flow. It's clear. What was our problem? That if there is a long memory in the order flow and each of the orders push the price, 
how can you have no memory at all in the, in the price process? We see that if, if it's a, a simple direct impact, it won't be the case. You cannot have a model like this. What we said is, let's write the, the, the let, let's write this type of propagator model so that your impact propagates in time. And what we see is that it indeed decreases in time. But what you say is, okay, I'm solving this problem, so we don't have the equations anymore, but how do I get G? It's a relation between autocorrelation C, which is here, and price response R, R which contains the fact that, that prices are diffusive except for some very small scales. So what we say is that, so let's write up this thing, which is the diffusivity condition of our, our mid-price, and say, how should G behave to get back what we were looking for? What we are look. So these, I mean, this is from the empirical evidence. Uh, like, why g should be of the power law form? I mean, we should get it explicitly if it's like the power law. But we are putting it. I mean, it says that uncharged. Well, there is no explicit way because we are not generating the data. What we can do is measure certain things. Okay. And what we are looking for is the relation, how it behaves, and if. Things follow. So, okay, well, I think what your point is that, well, if we know that prices are diffusive and if we made for a model for the price, then if you're solving our system, we should get back the proper uh, yeah. things should work. Yeah. Yes. So, indeed, this propagator is not some underlying wisdom of the world. What we say is we have a model for this and we want to verify how, how, that, how this propagator should behave. It's our construction. So we get, just by small, some call conclusion, to have diffusivity, we get this relation. And okay, you want to check empirically if things work out, because it's not that obvious when you fit a model if, if things, things work that way, but yes. Why we want to care about this? Because of course, we, this is for single trades, but we want to also see, okay, so what predictions do these give on other scales? So for that, we, we should know, if we have a description, we can calculate things. We could also say we just measure things and, and do only, Empiric, I mean, numerically integrating, I mean, yeah, summing. So, so, so this is the, the relation that we get, which actually is in line, not very much surface. So what we saw yesterday is gamma is something of the order 0, 0,5, which should be the case that, well, in practice, you get something order, order one quarter for, uh, for this beta. But this is, of course, on average, I mean, it's, it's not, uh, there are products for which you will see gamma 0, 06 and, uh, and beta 0, 02, and but their behavior is something like this. So it's, it's very slowly decaying, and it follows what, what, uh, what we'd expect here. Actually, okay, sorry, I want to show more properly. So here we see this 0, 025, but actually you can look at, it's an uglier figure a bit, but you can look at several products. What we are doing here is exactly the same, just the notation, might be, so it's the G on the, on the y, oh, g, which is plotted as a function of time lag, and I don't know if it's visible, so red is the data, and there is a line on it which comes from the, the, uh, the formula. Okay. And so the tail behavior is indeed uh, what, what, what you would expect. So, okay, same, no, no, no surprise. So, so this is how g behaves, but also we, we, this, this teaches us something, I mean, before getting to, 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 to further analyzing it is that, uh, okay, so you, indeed, we call it transient impact. In the, indeed, the impact of a single trade dissipates in time, so somehow uh, goes away, but very slowly. So you see that it's a, it's a very low exponent that it has, so it, it has an effect. Well, again, just to get some concrete things, here the time scale is 1,000. On this, at least on this data where it was done, this is at least the order of a day. So it's a 1,000 trades, but actually, I think it's all data, it might be over that. So, so it's really a, a, a short, uh, I mean, on these scales, very short, uh, uh, very slow, slow decay. And, uh, and okay, and so what we say is that to, to solve this puzzle that we had, that, that how can it be that order flow is long range correlated but prices are diffusive, well, you have to have some extremely slow adaptation of the market to what you're doing to get back to diffusivity. Yeah, well, it's... I mean, that's empirical data that 
that's empirical data. You can do two things. One is uh, fit the power law and compare to this, or calculate this and but plot it. It's a good fit. So I'm wondering why, so, I mean, I was expecting at some point noise should become relevant, which I don't know at which point, but it seems that uh, it's not that. Well, relevant. noise doesn't really become relevant. It, it becomes relevant for several other things. But it's not really relevant on this scale because, because you average it out. Simply, this noise, there is a lot of noise, but, but it averages out to, if you look at the volatility of the system, which we actually won't, I think, have time to, to go deep into it, there are a lot of effects that, uh, that noise give you. So if, if you look at the, the OK? Um, but in the price, they average out. OK, I mean, it's not perfect, of course. You, you see that there is noise in this. And sometimes figures are not nice. These, it's always the figures that you show are the figures are, which are nice. But typically, it works well. So it's, 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 there's no cheating here. Um, so why? Because if this noise had a non-zero mean, if, it, if there was some uh, average in it, then it would be exploited. So in practice, you think that it would be exploited by, uh, by people. So people measure this. and. You could put it in the model, and that's why we call it noise. Um, OK, so, so I wanted to, to say two things about this. One is that actually, OK, we, 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 we postulated this type of model, but uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking if I should start with this or if I should start with, uh, with another claim. I will start with, with another thing, and then I'll get back to this. So, so the question that remains is that, OK, we, we, we can have some type of description, phenomenological description of, of how, to, how the impact propagates in time, how to, and how to get back the diffusive turn of the market, given the long-range correlation here. The question is, we, see, we have seen this other fact, the impact of meta orders. So if you have several connected orders that you're doing in the market, how do you impact? What we have seen, there is this square root law, which, uh, which has many of, these, uh, many of its in many interesting things. So what would be the prediction of a, a super simple model like this? So, 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 so does it work? Right? But what you can do is that, OK, if you know the, the propagator of each trade, you can integrate it and get the propagator of, of a meta order. So that's what we'll write up uh, now. And so, so, so for that, we have, we have to do some assumptions. So we have to introduce some meta order type of thing in this model. So what we say is that, that, that you have, as we said, here only signs of trades counted. So there was a, everything was volume one. So what you want to do is uh, you want to have a meta order which, which is of size n n trades that you want to do uh, on horizon t. So in, in, in the next uh, t time steps, I want to do n trades with a constant rate. So I will, I will say that there is the rate of my trades will be, I will call it phi, will be, so its definition will be this, OK? And it's constant. So I don't know. Over 10,000 trades, I want to do 100. So I will do every 100th trade from now on and to see how I am pushing the price. Why are we looking at it? OK, we saw the square root impact. And we see that, OK, there is a nonlinear uh, behavior in this model. What, what does it give? So, so what would you get? And of course, you assume that, that, that there is a this, there is the autocorrelation in the system as we had it before. So, so you're, you're adding yourself to this, but you don't really change the correlation in the system. So what would be what you, you get as a result? Uh, assume that you're, let's say, buying. OK, let's say that you buy here. OK, it doesn't matter. But just, just. And so what you want to calculate is what will be this price, right? This price change. This is the definition of it. 
And so you can uh, do the following. So what it will actually be, you can see that you can write this up in the following way. It should be this. <laughs> What are you doing here? Well, OK, we, we made assumption which, uh, which was hidden. You're just summing up your trades in time. Um, yeah, no, well, OK, no, it's not, nothing ex extremely interesting to say. And, um, and what we have seen is uh, is it okay? We have seen that this G will behave as, uh, just to keep uh, this, this G, T, uh, no, it's there, okay. There is, no, there is no need to really write it up. It will be one minus gamma over two. So one can write up what will this thing be. And if you do the sum here, normally what you should get is the following. It will be some type of behavior like this. Um, Yeah. Sorry, it's like the there is a big T minus T. Um, there is a big T, yeah. Sorry. And uh, okay, so so if you if you do this sum, you can do it and prob I mean, this is this should be the thing that we get. So what 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 do we get? There will be a one because we are integrating. And this is the exponent of, of, of G. And, uh, and okay, so what does this, okay, so what would this mean given the facts that we know here? It should be the following. Uh, uh, so it should probably do something like this if I didn't make an error, which should behave in the following manner. Hopefully, okay. So one, one, one can do the calculation, and hopefully, I mean, the, the final result is good because then I tested. I hope I didn't make an error here right now. So you get a dependence, exactly what we are looking for. You check how does the price move if I do n trades or with a grade phi over a time horizon t. What we looked at before in meta orders, where we were talking about quantities. Talking about number of trades here is the same because we say all trades are units, so, 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 so the ratio of my trades to the other trade is exactly my rate, the ratio of my quantity to the total quantity. So this is what we get, which will say that, that there is, okay, so, so, so this is uh, one plus uh, gamma over two. So, so for, for realistic gamma that we saw that gamma is one half ish, this would be something like uh, n to the 0 0.75 or something like this. We sum with a phi is, what is it, 0 0.25 probably. Okay, so what, do we, what, what does this model tell us? Is that, uh, okay, it's, it, it's not what we're looking for, right? We are looking for square root of n dependence and no dependence on phi, ideally. What we get is not exactly this, but not extremely far. So what we see is, okay, there is, first of all, it's a, there is a weak dependence in phi, but it's 0 0.25. It's, it's, it's already something that is hard to verify or not. So, okay, it, it, it's at odds with what we, we thought, but it's, and we find something which is concave, right? So this is at odds with what we said. So we, we had this idea that, uh, that the same thing should be, okay, square root of n in reality, okay? So it's not good, we don't get it. It's a way higher parameter, but still it's concave. So we, we are able to get, get this concave behavior of impact. So we are not orders of <coughs> magnitude of, but it doesn't work. And of course the problem is that you, so you could say, oh, but what, what gamma would we need to get back the square root of here? The square root here, but we would need a gamma zero. So a correlation that, that decays, that doesn't decay at all. So, so we cannot, massage this type of model to get back what you want. Um, so, we are assuming that each time step you are having the same kind of number, which is 
yeah, here we so, so we, we go to simplified model. We just well already the 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 the, the, the so the, what does the propagator model say? It's only the sign of your trade that it's only you're trading plus one or minus one, and we are among those people. It's just the number of trades. All these things can be done. You you can move to a world where you do properly quantities. It's uglier to write up. It won't change uh, life. Of course, you could also say, yeah, but what if it's, this is not constant? This rate. Yeah. Ah, if you can do yourself. Yeah, but we are not studying. So what we wanted here, the question was, okay, you have a method. You have a decision on the direction. If you're doing buy and sell, buy and sell, you can have some strange effects, but it doesn't change the world. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same type of uh, integration. So. Hmm? How could you get to a square root with this type of thing? Nothing really. You, you don't get to square root with this type of model. But especially, I mean, it's not what you, you don't want to trick the system to go to square root because you know what you're measuring empirically and you want for that type of behavior to get the square root. So, okay, so, 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 so you get something concave. So it's, uh, what I want to stress is that, yeah, surely we didn't get the result that we wanted, but it's not completely stupid. So the, the fact that, that somehow this, uh, the, this idea that there is this Okay, we have a long range correlation that we have, and this have, we have the market which adapts very slowly to what we want to do. So we have, in a physics language, to the, um, the, 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 the medium we are moving in somehow adapts to us. Um, if this happens slowly, so if this is a power law -ish behavior, you get some what we call anomalous impact. So non, a nonlinear response in any case in the system. Okay? But, but not the right thing for the moment. Uh, so. Time. I wanted to just mention one thing, and then I think we'll stop, and you can study for your other stuff if you want still to study. I don't know. Um, is that okay? We postulated this model, right? We said, uh, well, well, let's put a propagator in the system. Let's say that every trade have, uh, does the same. So the effect of each trade is the same, but it propagates in time. Actually, one could come up with other models. I just want to mention it. We won't go into detail. Another approach to this could be, which is maybe a, a closer to, the, to, to, to a finance language approach would be, is to say, OK, it's not that every trade does the same, impacts in the same manner. And there is a transient impact, but you have some permanent effect. Every trade does something, and then it stays there forever. But what you do, what, but, what, but, but this effect depends on the history itself. Okay, so, so you could write something like this, which, which would be somehow condition related to what we discussed, so some type of surprise in the system. What you do now depends on what, uh, what was the past, so what is expected from you in a sense. So, okay, we just, so these are called somehow history dependent. Models, impact models, uh, and they are somehow based on the surplus of X. So, so what you assume in this type of models is that, let's call this epsilon hat the following thing. So my expectation at t minus 1 of what epsilon will be at t. Okay. It's, it's, well, it's, it's my best predictor of, of, the, of the near future. And so if you define it like this, then, then, then they, this type of HD, uh, this is called actually HDIM, often history-dependent multi-fact model. I just I might, I might use it sometimes like that. Uh, what it says is that, that it's, it's very similar, is the following, you say this. Okay. It's another type of model, another an alternative type of modeling. So what you say is that what are the, 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 the change in the system, the response in the system right in, on one, in one step will be how much I surprised the system somehow, how much was expected, uh, how much the system uh, or system, people acting in the system, uh, system expected this epsilon to be and how I was different from it. 
times something that doesn't depend on, 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 on anything, some kind of constant. Okay? And so what does it mean? It's a, if there is a prediction in the market and uh, it's perfect predictability, and exactly what, what they predicted happens, uh, then this will be zero. Of course, what's also epsilon is, 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 uh, is plus minus one, but its predictor need not be plus minus one. You, 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 there is a probability. So it says that if there is a perfect predictability, nothing will move. Okay, yes, yeah, sure. It was, it was uh, known to everyone before what will happen. And, uh, and otherwise, there is, a, uh, there is some type of response. And uh, okay, so one can check that actually in this type of models, prices will be, by definition, uh, non-predictable, martingale type of condition. Check. Price is um, unpredictable. Let's say like this. It's, it's by definition this type of, in this type of models. You, 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 it has to come out, and uh, and so the type of uh, okay. I don't want to very much go into detail of this type of models, but what what you get out of this is um, okay. I, I, I will write one more thing. So so so. Uh, no, okay. I think I think I don't want to go. It's, we have five minutes. So I don't want to go much into detail. So, but anyway, this is also a type of modeling that one could do. One thing I want to say about it. So, what you can do is write up properly expectations. What's the expectation of the? You have some type of prediction, and then you can. Uh, and and what's what's the expectation of the price move if the prediction was uh, right? What's the expectation if the prediction was wrong? And of course, you want to weight these by the probability of, uh, of one and the other. So this can be written up as, as, as a plus minus one and the probability. Um, you can write up properly what is the condition for uh, well, how should the price move, what is, uh, okay, in one case and the other. I don't want to, sorry, go into details. I know that I'm vague here. The main thing that I wanted to say that actually one can prove that if you only have one type of event, so not unlike, for example, in the exercise that I sh said, and if epsilon hat is some special behavior, then the two are the same. So actually, these two models match up on the other, so what we call the uh, propagator will be equal to this type of model. If in a given case, so not in general, Is this not in general? So it, it, it cannot be said. But there is one case I just want to mention it because uh, because it can come up elsewhere. So if this epsilon uh, t minus one uh, expectation at t minus one of epsilon t is uh, is a linear combination. of epsilons in the past, then yes, then it's, it's the case. Believe my claim. Uh, actually, in the slides, I think there, will, there are some... You, you might also not care about all these details. I mean, we have, we have too many models, you can say. Anyway, why I wanted to mention it, it's one obvious way of coming up with a model. So let's not, not imagine a propagator, but let's imagine history dependence. In general, it's not the same except if this condition holds, and there is a special name for, name for this type of processes. They are called the discrete autoregressive processes, which is called, I think, DAR in the literature. So if one is interested, there is a special type of, 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 of uh, stochastic processes which, which uh, ensures that the two are the same. And uh, I think I'll... I leave you now. I mean, uh, of course, I I'm happy to get questions. These noises, uh, is there any evidence that they're Gaussian? Um, evidence for the Gaussianity. Uh, in practice, I wouldn't be that sure. I mean, the, the fact that they, they have uh, average zero, that's okay. So, in fact, if you start to look at higher order moments of, of the price 
process of the price changes, you start to get uh, a lot of deviations. So you, you have you have effects. I would say that not. I don't have a very explicit answer. I, I, I think I would say no, but I don't have a good uh, way to. Yes, and but what we say is that okay, we can assume this, and we can. Most of these are testable, right? But what we did here is not a uh, like. For example, for the beta, we can test it. So indeed, in the for at this level, also, so we are looking at the first or at most second moment. It's okay, but it can be, uh, can have deviations above. 